اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فویل للذین یکتبون الكتاب بیعیدیہم ثم یقولون هذا من عند اللہ لیشتروا به ثمنا قلیلا فویل لهم مما کتبت ایدیہم وویل لهم مما یقسبون صدق اللہ العظیم رب الشرح لصدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقه قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The ayah which I have read is from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 79. Allah says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Woe to them who write down the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah. لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا So they can mint some reward, some money out of it. فَوَيْلُ اللَّهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ So woe to them what their hands do right. وَوَيْلُ اللَّهُمْ مِمَّا يَقْسِبُونَ And woe to them what they earned through it. Today the topic is about expounding of Luke, Gospel of Luke. Chapter number 1, verse number 30, the Annunciation, which has given in the Bible. Before going into the subject, I would like to elaborate a few points about Christianity. You see, uh, Christians nowadays are very busy, especially Christian missionaries, about expounding points against Quran, about the critical study of the language of Quran, about a hadith, etc. They're very busy, Christian missionary, because they realized that there is no benefit of apologetics anymore because they are doomed in this criterion. So they want to turn the tables. So they did turn the tables. But unfortunately, you see, you cannot turn the tables unless you clear your points your contradictions, your anomalies, and so on. But anyways, drowning man crutches at straw, so they have to do, they have to turn the tables because they are utterly failed to provide the answers which have been imposed on them from the dawn of the Christian dumb. So, today I'm going to give you a task. My Muslim brothers and sisters, to memorize these verses of the Luke, the Gospel of the Luke, the Gospel, from chapter 1, 30 onwards, where the Annunciation has been given to Mary about the birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Now, it's your duty to memorize it and then expound and exfoliate to the rest of the Christian dumb. Instead of talking about Quran and Hadith, there's no benefit because you have to clear your criterion, your anomalies first, then to decide what comes later because you say Quran or Islam came later. So it's your obligatory duty to clear these anomalies first to catch the customer, which is Bible. The Annunciation has been given in the Qur'an too as well, but fortunately, being the Word of God, Qur'an's version is 100% correct, whereas the Biblical version is 100% incorrect. I would not like to make generalization statements, rather I will prove it today. Quran mentions two places about annunciation and then the birth, which I'm not going to touch today because it is not the topic. But as a general reference or frame of work, it's mentioned in Ali Imran chapter 3, verse number 42 to 49, the annunciation, the good news. The same in Luke chapter 1, verse number 30. Then the fulfillment of annunciation happened in Surah Maryam. Chapter 19, verse 27 to 33 onwards. 
Similarly, in Luke chapter 1, verse number 33, Luke, the physician of Paul, is trying to tell what happened between this uh, incident about giving the glad tiding to Mary by angel. So we would like to see what really happened so far. In Quranic version, it's very simple. Allah gave a glad tiding from angels in plural to Mary that you're gonna have you gonna you are going to conceive a child without a man or anything miraculously. And then later on, when babe was born, she defend babe defended his mother Jesus Christ from this unbelieving audience of Jews, the same Jews you know the James Jews who were destroying and killing previous prophets. But in the Bible, two of the prophecies were given to Mary about Jesus Christ, which none of them were fulfilled. Maybe today the Christian missionary is you know, bold enough, especially the Eastern Christian missionary, Pakistani Christian missionary, Indian or Indo-Pak subcontinent Christian missionaries. Maybe they are clever enough to explain you know, uh, nowadays I'm looking at so many debates from the Pakistanis uh, and Indians. And by God, the debates are so low in knowledge, in ideologies, in concepts, in eschatologies. It's so low, as I call always, that these debates are fallen into the category of garbage apologetics. Garbage. These Christian missionaries, especially in Pakistan and India, they do not know Urdu, how to speak Urdu, neither Urdu, English, Arabic, then ancient Hebrew, ancient Greek of their own Bible. So all these languages, they do not know how to speak, but they want to debate. Every person in Pakistan, Christian missionary, they want to debate and just watch their debates. They are worrying about Quran, the language of Quran, the Arabic of Quran. They're worrying about the compilation of Quran, but they themselves do not know the language of Jesus Christ. They themselves do not know who were the authors of all those New Testament and Old Testament. Ask them, go ahead and ask them. Who was the author of the book of Kings? Who was the author of book of Samuel? Who was the author of book of Chronicles? Ask these people. Give us the complete biography of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Who wrote these four gospels? Ask them. And by God, trust me, they were not able to answer these questions. Or they are not. Because they know it that these all are assumption in as much so, supposed to be, accordingly, bus. This is the criterion which they are working from the beginning. After 16th century, King James Version came. Under the majesty of King James in England, Anglican Church came into existence. And from there, they got a hole in the Bible into their hands, which was the critical study started. Before that, Pope were, was not allowing them to use these kind of books in their homes. So they were unaware. Then suddenly when they got these things in their hands, Christian missionaries came into existence. These Bible thumpers, hot gospelers, evangelists, Evangelium, these evangelists, these proselytizers, propagators, etc. Christianity was never spread on the grounds of logic. Before in the Europe, it came through the political point of view at the time of Constantine in 325 AD. And after that, it came through Renaissance and Reformation concept, etc. But on the logical ground, no. Yes, on the voyages, on subjugation, on colonialism, they brought these Christian missionaries with them. 
and convert those people by force. I challenge bring any document which says that Christianity was spread on the grounds of logic. Never. As soon as you said that God died on the cross for the welfare of the people, your logic goes there, out. So these contradictions today, which I'm going to share with my viewers, you would sense and you can sense what kind of grave defects are there in these kind of statements. And this is not your job to fix it. It's the job of a Christian missionary. I would like to say something. Please do not put all the Christians into one basket. There are many good hearted Christians living in the rest of the world and good hearted even living in Pakistan. So do not be shy by appreciating those people. But my confrontation is with Christian missionaries in Pakistan who are raising dust into the remote places taking unfair advantage of Muslim lands and converting those people by deceitful manners. Deception pretext, but on the reality, not on the logic, by giving them some kind of greed about against poverty, about education, or showing them American dream on the West side. These pastors who are playing with these poor people I want these poor people to go to them, these pastors, and ask these questions, which I'm going to tell you now, because they are very eager to make conventions, but they do not like to give you answers. They will never give you answers. You watch. Their convention is so concise and compounded, they get money and masalama, what Jesus Christ says. You are not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Sell everything, every position you have, and then follow me. It's difficult for a poor person or rich person, sorry, to enter into paradise or heaven the same as you cross a camel into an eye of a needle. This is the example Jesus Christ is giving you. But anyways, today's pastor, they are taking money, whereas Jesus was having no money. <clears throat> he said, even the foxes have holes and the birds have nests to fly. The son of man has no place to put his head upon. But over here, every Tom, Dick and Harry, Nasir, Mansur, Ahmad or any kind of Christian, you name them, they are getting money, these pastors. 10, 15 years when I saw pastors today in Pakistan, which when they started their monastery or ministry, and now after 10, 15 days, they are rich. They collected more than uh, 1 million rupees. And those poor people who were giving them, their circumstances are same as it is when they were started. So this you can sense. It's all a business, minting money, that's it. And what is he giving you in return? Nothing. Just same quotations about John 3.16, John 3.16 about, but when you start reasoning with them, they will say, no, you can't reason, get out. Now I'm going to give you a few verses. Go ahead. <clears throat> and people even in the West, Go and ask your pastors, please, sir, explain how these prophecies were fulfilled now. So let's start. Luke chapter number one, verse number 30. Angel came to Mary. Mary, fear not. God is going to give you a glad tiding of a son whose name shall be called Jesus, the son of the most high. Now, this expression, son of the most high, I don't want to go into that, but it's very clear. Bible got sons by the tons, you know that. And even Jesus says that you people, you yourself call gods and son of God is nothing in John chapter 10 verse number 30 onwards. You can, you know that. So this son of the most high is not something, <clears throat> a great value as an expression that he's the only son. Luke chapter 3 verse 38 says, Adam, the son of God. So angel came to Mary and said, Mary, fear not. God is going to give you a glad tiding of a son whose name shall be called Jesus, the son of the Most High. Now, I want to ask these Christians and pastors, did angel say this word Jesus? Because Jesus is Latinized form. He didn't say Jesus. 
But you are telling all of the people who are reading the translation of the translation that he said Jesus, which is wrong. It's unethical wrong. It's totally unethical. Why? Because <clears throat> you are putting a lie that he said Jesus, whereas you know that, the pastor knows that, he did not say Jesus. Angel didn't say Jesus. He could have said Isa, Yahshua, or Yasur, or whatever, but not Jesus. That 100% sure. And then further he says, the son of the Most High. Son of the Most High is the expression which is not something, you know, uh, a point to be taken. Why? Because Bible got son by the tongues. In Luke, same chapter, chapter number 3, verse number 38, it says, Adam, the son of God. So what's the point? So this expression, son of the Most High, has no value. It's just like an expression in the idiomatic sense in Jews, because they say son means a prophet of God. As why Bible says, Adam, the son of God. I said it just now, Luke chapter 3, verse 38. And then Jesus also said about this thing. In John chapter 10 verse 30, when Jews said that you are doing blasphemy by calling yourself son of God or making yourself equal to God, then he explained it. He said, is it not written in your law that ye are gods? Who? Jews. <clears throat> 82nd Psalm, you are the children of God, the most high. Then in the book of Exodus in chapter 4, where it says, God is speaking to Moses, says, Behold, I have made you a God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron, thy shall be a prophet. And these statements, when you see, Jesus says, clearly, I don't want to go into that. And then after that, they were start picking stone against him. They said, as many good works, I'm reading John chapter 10, verse number 30 on words, as many good works I have shown you from my father, and out of from which good work you are stoning me for. Jew says, we are not stoning you for the good works, but we are stoning you that thou being a man, make up thyself a God. What did he say after that? Did he say, yes, I agree with you? As you Christian says, not yet. Yes, this is what it means. No. Then he says, it not written in your law that ye are gods. And he said, whom the word has come, say ye of him whom the father has sanctified and sent into this world, thou blasphemous. Because you said that you are son of God, which is nothing. Because you are being called gods in your Bible. Who? Jews. This is the explicit, you know, statement of Jesus Christ in a defend of this ideology of being, you know, son of God. So, son of the most high. Then what happens after that? You will get, angel said to Mary, mark my words from here, you have to be very attentive. Angel said to Mary that your son, he will take his father's throne, David, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And his power or whatever he's ruling will be forever. I would like to ask these Christian missionaries, which throne of David was given to Jesus Christ at his time. Give me one quotation from the Bible. Which throne of David was given? Sorry. Which ruling was given to Jesus Christ over the house of Jacob in the Bible? Please quote me one verse and that is enough. <clears throat> Trust me guys, in the Bible, it's all opposite. Angel said to Mary that you will get, your son will get his father's throne, David, David's throne, in other words, and he will rule over the house of Jacob, meaning the children of Yaqub, Jews, forever. You know that. That house of Jacob, they put him on the cross, and Jesus said, my own receive me not. Then the throne of David, that throne of David, Pontius Pilate, the pagan was sitting and was interrogating Jesus Christ instead of Jesus Christ would interrogate him according to the prophecy. So where is the truth? When there was having midnight trial, when they brought him to Sanhedrin, 
Jews charged him that he is claiming to be the son of God, which is blasphemy. And then he explained them, Jews, I don't want to go there, but when they took him to Pontius Pilate, over there they changed the charge and they said he's claiming to be the king of the Jews. And then Jesus Christ said to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this earth. What angel said that you will, he will take his father's throne or your son will take his father's throne, David, the throne of David. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. Jesus Christ said, my own received me not. Where is the ruling? And according to you, they, these Jews killed him on the cross. The chapter is even close. It is Islam which came to the rescue. Wama qataluhu, wama salabuhu. Neither they killed him, nor they crucified him. Walakin shubbi alhum. But it was made to appear to them so. But we have a rescue for him, but you don't. You believe he died. So there was no throne of David given to him and, didn't he, and even he didn't aspire for it. He said, my kingdom is not of this earth, not of this world. Throne of David was on this earth, sir. Throne of David was a physical throne, not on the heavens. As one of the Christian missionaries said, oh, they are, they are talking about on the heaven. What is the parade of kingdom, this uh, throne of David on the heaven? What does it fulfill? What does it service? So, so this, this thing, throne of David, nobody gave him. And on that throne of David, Pontius Pilate was sitting when Jesus was there on the trial. Imagine that. And then 70 AD, when Titus kicked all Jews out and destroyed the second temple, he took that throne of David, a rock or a stone, and he brought into Ireland. Then from Ireland, it went into Scotland. From Scotland came back to Ireland. And then from Ireland, it came back to, oh no, it just went back to Westminster Abbey, the Royal Parliament in England, United Kingdom. So this is the story. This is the history of throne of David. And this throne of David is still there under the, the chair or throne of Queen Elizabeth or whosoever the queen in this coronation, coronation, sorry, they use this in uh, anointment, they take the for consecration. So throne of David is gone. And who, which house of Jacob, Jesus Christ ruled? 2000 years are gone, 2021. And still Jews, they call him imposter. They call him son of, Pand son of Pandera, bastard. They call him in the Tel Aviv television. Which, tell me, which ruling? Jesus, and, and the verse says, forever. Forever means till you're born, till your death. Forever means forever. Not there's a complete, you know, respite or interval between those two eons or eras. No, it doesn't mean that. Prophecy says, your son will take your father's throne, David, which was not given to Jesus, and didn't he didn't aspire for it. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, which he didn't rule because those house of Jacob, they put him on the cross to get rid of him. And Jesus said from his own mouth, my own receive me not. Whatever as he said, going to rule it. Or son of the son of David, he was caught and put on the trial. And then the prophet's father says, and his ruling, his kingdom will be forever till end. Which ruling of Jesus? 2000 years are gone. Who is ruling in Israel? Who is ruling in the rest of the world? New world order, Antichrist, Dajjal. And still, Jews are waiting for their Messiah, which they think is a real Messiah, Mashiach. They call this the, the, their Mashiach. And Islam and Christianity both together says, no, that will be Antichrist, Messiah, Dajjal. So this was a message to my viewers. Ask these two questions to them. And which sense these two prophecies were fulfilled? Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin.